Hey folks, it's been a while, but we are back again with some of our ARC tutorial videos. This time we're going to be talking about ARC Survival Ascended instead of ARC Survival Evolved. Uh, today we are going to be talking about breeding using a combination of mods that we have available here on the Fractured Earth servers. This is not meant as an in-depth breeding tutorial, but more as a way to use a combination of the mods that we have here that will help make breeding go a little smoother and faster. Please ignore my horrible graphics. I am recording this on my potato PC, which is, as always, struggling a little bit with ARC, but it gives me a much better recording option than my laptop does. So let's dive in and get started. We're going to be focusing on three mods in particular for this. Uh, first of all, a mod that is called Better Breeding. This is kind of an in the background mod. There are no structures or objects that you have to craft or place. It just kind of works in the background. What that does is when we are breeding critters together, it is automatically going to take the best stats from both parents and combine them into a baby. So you automatically get your new baby with the best stats possible. This is going to cut down significantly on the need to spend hours and hours trying to get your perfect breeders with all the same stats. Second mod that we're going to be using today is Dino Depot, which is our soul ball like uh, dino storage mod. And in particular, we're going to be talking about the Depot Terminal, which is going to help us automate a couple of tasks. And we're also going to take a quick look at the storage boxes that come with it as well. And third, we're going to be looking at the propagators. These come from a mod called Cyber Structures, and in your engrams, they're going to be listed with the CS for Cyber Structures prefix. And if you are looking to get a propagator, let's see where that is in the engrams. The propagator is at level 111, so this is more of a late game tool that you're going to be using. But once you get to this point, I highly recommend it, despite the high resource cost, because it is going to make breeding for mutations an absolute breeze, and also cut down on the need for gigantic breeding circles all the time. So, with that being said, let's kind of dive into things. And we're going to start with the first step of our breeding process, and that is getting our perfect pair. The easiest way I have found to do this is to go ahead and get a couple of dinos of whatever species it is you're trying to breed. For this demo, I'm using dodos just because they're super easy for me to run around, punch out, and tame, and also because they have a really quick time to both breed and also to uh, raise up in the cryos. So, first thing you're going to want is to find a dino that has the high stats you're looking for. In this case, it is my male, level 450 right here. The rest of my dodos are all lower. I have a 300, a 29, a 12, and another 450 over here that I bred up earlier. So, what I find most important in this is that for me, it is easiest if my male is the one that has the highest stats. Uh, at the beginning, this isn't really that important if you tame just two to begin with and your female is one with the highest stats, don't worry about it. Just breed them together. They'll automatically make a baby with the highest stats from both parents. And then you can just keep doing that until you get a male with those perfect stats. And then we're going to use that perfect male to make our breeding females that we're going to use. So in this case, my male is the one that has all those stats that I want. Um, real quick, you could also, if you have it, use the mutator. I have one down there uh, at the far end that is set to change the gender. But honestly, it's usually easiest just to keep breeding them till you get a male and then breed that to all of your females. So, first step, obviously, we're going to go ahead and turn on mating. And I'm going to go back in and I'm going to copy those settings over to the rest of my dodos to start them breeding. 
Well, these guys are breeding. Let's take a look at our Dino Depot terminal to see how to set this up. So Dino Depot has two items that hold soul balls. It has the terminal, which we have right here, and it also has a plain storage box. The terminal is the one that has a bunch of fancy options. The storage boxes are just that, they're storage. So if I go into the radial menu and go to terminal settings, you can see how I have this one set up. These give us a lot of options that our old Soul Ball mod on ASC used to have. We can do passive production of various resources. We can produce unfertilized eggs. But what we're focusing on today are a couple of simple functions. Number one, allow auto capture. This means that when I hatch an egg, it will automatically grab that baby, put it in a soul ball, and pull it into the terminal's inventory for me. So I don't have to run around claiming a bunch of baby dinos. It's going to do all that work for me automatically. Second is egg incubation. This works similar to best egg in that the fertilized eggs in its inventory will automatically incubate. And once they're incubated, you just kick them out of the terminal and they should automatically hatch. The babies will then get sucked up by the terminal into soul balls ready for you to use. The last one and most important is fertilized egg searching. What this does is it looks for any fertilized eggs in the area that dinos may have dropped, automatically pulls them into its inventory to start the incubation. These are really the only ones that you need checked off in order to use this as an awesome breeding tool. Now, one important thing to know about the fertilized egg searching, this only works if you have a soul balled oviraptor in your terminal. You can check it without an oviraptor, but if you don't have an oviraptor in there, it's not going to pick up fertilized eggs. The level of your oviraptor really doesn't matter, so I just grabbed a level 15 and threw it in there, and it will now automatically pick up my fertilized eggs. You also want to make sure you have some soul balls in here. I have way too many. I went a little crazy the other day, but this way I don't have to worry about running out of soul balls. If it does not have soul balls in its inventory, it is not going to automatically pick up the babies. So make sure you have both an oviraptor in here to pick up any eggs, and that you have sufficient soul balls to pick up any babies. So here I have my four eggs from my dodos that I got, and they are all fertilized. So now all I have to do, looking at these, they are fully incubated. I'm just going to kick them out. They are going to hatch almost immediately, and you're going to see that I now have four new dodos that have automatically been grabbed and thrown into the inventory. So they are all perfect pairs um, most of the time. And I say most of the time because although we're not actively searching for mutations right now, it is still possible for one of these babies to have a mutation. So before you go and start using these to breed, make sure you check for any mutations that they might have. Remember that we usually want to start with clean pairs with no mutations to build up our breeding colony. So this is a level 450 female. That's fine. So we'll stick her over there. I have a perfect 450 male. Here's another male. I'm going to grab him as well, and I'll show you why in a moment. And another 450 female. And luckily, none of these have mutations, so we are good to move on to the next stage. Before I do that, I'm going to come in here and make sure I turn off mating because I do not need... 50 million dodos wandering around my base. So you folks are all turned off for the moment. So next, over here to the propagators. Now, the propagators, as you can see, look like little mini cloning chambers. And the important thing to remember about these is that they do require element to use. They will not work if you don't have element in their inventory. So if I go in here, I have a little stack of element here that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to go ahead and stick all of these in here, even my two males. Now, over here, this is kind of how I have things set up for my breeding. I have my propagator ready to go here. 
I have element in the propagator. I have my dinos in my propagator. Over here, I have a storage box. This is the dino ball storage that I was talking about a few moments ago. This has no fancy options. It is simply storage. And if I go into the inventory, you can see that I have set this up with folders for my clean breeders and also a folder for each stat I'm working on. I know everybody has their own preferred way to do breeding lines and to organize them, but this is the way that works for me. I like to keep my stats separated out as I breed. So as I get my mutated stats, they'll go in the appropriate folders. And each time I replace a breeder male with another one with a higher mutation, that old one is going to go into the correct folder so that I can look back through my entire line later if I have any problems. The last thing that I use that is absolutely not required, but if you are far enough along um, and have unlocked this, this is the CS incinerator. Anything you put in here will automatically be incinerated, and I use this for getting rid of extra eggs that I don't need. I use this for getting rid of dinos that I don't need. It is absolutely not required. It's just very handy if you have access to it. If you do not have an incinerator, please make sure that you either A, eat all of the eggs that you're not using because just tossing them out to despawn can cause some lag or better yet save them up and use them as part of your kibble farm for making kibble for destroying unwanted dinos uh, easiest way i found is to set up another dino depot terminal and in the terminal there is a button when you go into its inventory called kill all and that will destroy anything in its inventory I highly recommend making that a separate terminal from any others that you're using. That way you don't accidentally destroy any dinos that you want to keep. So we're almost ready to begin breeding, but there's one important step that I purposefully left out. We need to make sure that these dinos are fully grown before we put them in here. If I hover over them right now, you see they say baby. It's probably not going to work very well if I try to breed it while it still thinks they are babies. Even though if we look at our growth down in the bottom level of this box, it says adult 100%, the data that it has is going to show it still as a baby until we throw it out and recryo it. So what we wanna do is make sure before we put those dinos in there that we chuck them all out. Come here, babies and they should be fully grown. We do have very boosted growth rates inside our inside our cryos, so they should grow fairly quickly. Even a giga will grow up within a cryo in about five or six minutes or so, if I'm remembering correctly from our testing. And things like dodos and other smaller dinos are going to be pretty much instantaneous. So now our cryos should recognize them as adults, and I'm gonna go ahead and put them all in here. Once they're in and I have my element ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and click activate. This gives me some options. The only one we're going to worry about right here is prepare dinos for breeding. I'm going to click on that. It's going to process the dinos in here. The more dinos you have, the slower that's going to be. And then it changes to say start breeding. I'm going to click on start breeding and here are my dinos that are available to breed. One of the things I love about the propagator is that it doesn't really matter what gender your dinos are. If we look here in the center, we have gender options. So right now I have two females and two males. They're all the same um, stats, so it doesn't really matter. I'm going to say view this one as female. Now you'll see this now will consume one element in order to do that but it's going to make this male dodo act like a female dodo. You can, of course, if you have it unlocked, use the mutator to change the gender, but this kind of removes that step. The other interesting thing about it is that it does not physically change the gender. It will still remain a male, even if we go through this process, breed them, and then take these dinos out. It's still going to remain a male, but for the purposes of breeding, it's going to pretend that it's a female and it will produce an egg. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to click start breeding. And depending on the dino, it's going to take a couple moments for it to go ahead and produce the eggs. 
if I back out of here, it's going to show me up here at the top that it's breeding dodos. There are three mating, zero recovering. You're also going to see a little holographic representation of whatever it is you are breeding inside the propagator. So this guy is going to go ahead, and because they're dodos, it shouldn't take them very long. In a moment, you should see them switch from mating to recovering, which is the breeding cooldown. So let's give them a moment to finish up. There we go. So it's now switched to recovering and none are mating. So I can come in here and take a look and I have three eggs. What's nice about this is it's going to show me whether the eggs are male or female babies right off the bat. Blue for male, pink for female. It'll show me their levels and I can see already right here 452. This one's going to have a mutation of some point. And I can look at it and very easily see the stats and where it got those stats from, either its mother or its father. If I have a mutation, it's going to be in bright green next to the stat. I know I don't want this one right now because right now I'm more concerned with getting multiple females so that I can then continue to build up all of my breeders. So. Once I get to this point, I'll take my eggs out. I'll throw them in the incubator. I will let them hatch up. I say incubator, I mean the, the Dino Depot terminal, which is going to incubate for me. And any eggs that I don't want, like this one with a mutation, you can either eat, bake it into kibble, or toss it in the incinerator and have it go bye-byes. So what I want to end up with is one clean male, at least, and a whole bunch of clean females and all of the dinos should have the same stats. You can use the propagator for this step or you can just use your plain breeders like the dodos I have out because with better breeding you're going to be guaranteed those stats. But I just wanted to show you the basics of how this propagator works. The one thing that does not work in the propagator at this point is better breeding and the propagator don't work together. So for example, if I took my original dodos and threw them in there, it is not automatically going to give them the better stats. In order for better breeding to do its work and get you those perfect stats every time, the dinos need to be bred outside of the propagator. That may change in later updates, I don't know, but for now, if you're trying to get those perfect statted dinos, starcher breeding, outside of the propagator and then you can continue it in the propagator if you want to be able to do kind of other things while it's doing this or just breed them outside of the propagator as you would normally. Now since I have the eggs that I want I'm going to tell it stop breeding. You want to make sure you turn this off when you are done. Please 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 do not leave these breeding while you are offline just like any other kind of offline breeding, it can seriously lag out the server. One thing that you may have noticed, even though I click stop breeding, it still says stop breeding. This is simply a visual bug from what I've gathered from their Discord. Even though it looks like it's still breeding, it technically has stopped. There are a couple ways you can get rid of this bug. Um, one way is to take everything out of it, pick up the propagator and stick it back down again. That will reset the visuals. Or, what I find easier, just go out of render, come back, and it should have reset. This is purely a visual bug. Um, one other thing you can do is, if you're looking at my little screen here, you can deactivate. And that also kind of guarantees that it's going to stop as well. But for the most part, if you click stop breeding, go out of render, come back, that will change it over so it is appropriately stopped. All right. So... We have, at this point, made our clean breeders. Our only next step is to make a bunch more females. And again, the propagator doesn't really care if it's male or female. Just for my ease of keeping track of things, I like to have all females with one male, but that is entirely up to you. So over here, I have another propagator set up, and this one has all of my clean breeders. So I have a whole bunch of females, and my one clean male. These are from a different breeding, so the stats are not the same as the ones we were just doing. This was from before we had better breeding, so I picked ones with stats I could live with and uh, made them all the same here. 
So now we're going to go in and we're actually going to start the mutating process. I'm going to click activate, prepare dinos for breeding, start breeding, and here comes the fun part. So here are all of my dodos, all of their genders, and we have a new column here called mutation pulse. This is how many mutation pulses it's going to get. Each mutation pulse is going to cost element and it is a per dino cost, not a per breeding cost. So please keep that in mind. You can go in and set each of these manually, but thankfully we don't have to. Down here underneath that column, there's an empty box. You're gonna click in that box, type in the number two and click off of it. And now each of those dinos is going to get two mutation pulses. We are currently set with two as the maximum that you can get inside the propagator. That may change later, I'm not sure. But for now, know that two is your max. No matter what number you put it in at, anything above two is going to default back to two only. Um, unlike with the mutators, where you can set up a breeding pulse of three or four or five on ASE, um, the propagator does limit the number of mutation pulses you can get. However, I find this trade-off is fine by me just because of the ease of breeding and more importantly, I no longer have to find room to put out all of my breeding rings and take care of all of those dinos out in the open. So two element for two breeding pulses. If I was only doing one, it would be one element per dino. So you kind of get the idea there. They're gonna get two mutation pulses, which should give us four mutation points, because remember, each mutation gives you two extra points. And I'm going to go ahead and click Start Breeding. It's going to use that element, and just like before, they are mating. We'll give them a moment to go ahead and make their eggs. While they're doing that, I'm going to show you kind of what this looks like when you get a little further along. So over here are some of the ones that I've been working on off and on. In this one, I have my Gigantoraptors and all my females, my element, and my male in here is now up to 12 rounds of mutation with 48 mutation points into melee. So once you get going, it's gonna work the same way as regular breeding. You're going to replace your clean male with your first mutated male, do another round of breeding with the mutation pulses, replace your old one with your newly mutated one with more and just keep stacking up those stats. Again, this is not meant to be a how to breed tutorial, more of how to use these mods to make breeding easier. So I'm not going into super amounts of breeding detail. So now our dodos have finished mating. We should have a whole bunch of eggs in here. Indeed we do. And now all I have to do is go find the ones with the mutations that I want. When I do this the first time, I look for ones that have mutations for each stat that I want to breed. I'll start by looking at the males. This one has a food mutation, which I don't care about. This one has a health mutation, so I'll take that. What else have we got? We have a weight mutation. I'll take that because I'm breeding for weight as well. We have a stam mutation. The only thing I need now is a melee. I don't see any more males, so let's look at our females. Do we have a melee mutation in any of these? Oh, we're getting close. There we go, there's my melee mutation. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop breeding. And these eggs that I grabbed are now going to go over into my terminal to begin their incubation status. Once they have incubated, I'll hatch them out. Remember to toss them out to make them reach full growth. And then I will come back here in my storage box. I'll put the ones that I'm not working with in their folders. I like to start with melee first, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, so I put my stam mutant here, my health mutant here, my weight mutant here. My clean male will come out and I will replace him with my melee mutation. Now again, uh, the propagator doesn't care if the dino you put in is male or female. 
I do recommend that if you are swapping genders on something in the mutator, that when you toss the baby out to make it full grown, you <laughs> name it so that it is easier to figure out which is the one you want. Um, in my case, I like to name them by stat and by how many. So melee one, melee two, melee three. And if I was using a female, I would put, um, you know, maybe male melee one or whatever so that I remember that's the one I want to change. You can also do that just by looking at the, the uh, level on it, because remember, mutations go up on the level as well. But do what works best for you. Again, remember to get rid of those extra eggs. And when you're done, stop that breeding and deactivate. Again, it'll still look like it's going, but once you go out of render and come back, that'll get set back to normal. And that's pretty much it. That is the easiest way I have found so far for breeding using these three mods. And again, that's better breeding for getting the perfect breeders. <laughs> the Dino Depot terminal for a multitude of cool options, including collecting my fertilized eggs, incubating them, and also storing everything for me. And then last but not least, the propagators, which make breeding so much easier. Again, I think my favorite part of all of this is that with the propagators, there is no more need to have these giant breeding circles out that cause lag and that you have to sit there and babysit. I can leave these breeding while I am doing other things in the game and come back to check on them periodically. Just remember, please, if you are leaving the game, please make sure all of your propagators are turned off and that any dinos that you had out that you've been using for breeding have also been turned to stop mating as well. Hope this helps, and hopefully we'll have a few more tutorial vids coming in the future.